Well, steel companies, they should deliver a strong set on three big factors. Lower raw material cost, strong demand momentum despite the seasonally weak monsoon quarter, and benefit of reporting on a low base that's in quarter two FI23. Let's get a little bit more specific and look at the key highlights and the key factors at play. Now, Kotak estimates volume growth of around 8% on a rather low base. The average realization is expected to be down by roughly around 2.5 to around 3,000 rupees per ton. But flat prices, well, they were a little bit more resilient, while long product prices, well, they saw a sharper decline. It could be because it was monsoon season as well. Now, this was mostly offset by lower cooking coal costs, which dipped by around 45 to around $60 on a per ton basis sequentially. But we have witnessed a sharp jump in cooking coal prices towards the end of September, and that can limit gains for the second half of this fiscal. I know costs as well are likely to remain a little bit softish, which should be down by around 3 to around 4% on a sequential basis. Let's get to the EBITDA per ton basis, though. We can see a sequential improvement for both JSW Steel as well as sale in particular. Now, Nuvama says that sale is estimated to be an outperformer as it will benefit from two factors. One is the rise in volumes, which can jump as much as around 20% sequentially. And also, it's a little bit more sensitive to the fluctuations that we see in cooking coal prices. So when it moves up, they get hit harder. When it moves down, they'll benefit a little bit more. And as I said earlier, there was a fall that we witnessed in long product prices due to monsoons. JSPL, well, they'll bear the brunt because they have a higher exposure to long products, which will lead to the beta per ton actually contracting sequentially. Tata Steel's Europe operations, well, the losses will continue and they're expected to expand. That's because of lower volumes, weak prices, as well as high cost of inventory. Now, the key monitorable from year on will include the recent spike that we've seen in cooking coal costs. How does that limit gains for the second half of this year? The progress on the CAPEX, namely JSPL, because they have a big CAPEX plan out there, and also commentary on demand from China in particular and other developed countries. The margins where they're expected to remain steady for fair risk firms, even in the third quarter. This, as the exit prices were higher, for the last quarter, towards the end of September, that is. But this will be offset by the rising cooking coal cost. Well, before we wind down, let's give you a quick snapshot of how the valuations stack up. As you can see, normally you have sale that trades at the lower end of the multiples, both on the EV upon a bitter as well as price to book, as, while JSW Steel is a relatively more expensive in comparison to the other names.